In this video, we're going to show how to use custom layouts and custom controls with your forms. So let's start by inserting a form. And all forms start out in a simplified mode. And in this mode, we can use this button to initialize the form to fit a certain database table. So let's say we want to have a form that lets us create new entries for our admin panel integration, database integration, for the US states table. So now we get this form that is nicely initialized to all the fields available in this table, which we're also displaying on the left here. And from here, I can toggle off simplified mode. And this actually preserves all of the uh, fields that we originally had. But now I can directly select these fields on the canvas and start manipulating this form um, just like any other element on the page. So for instance, I can start applying my own arbitrary layouts. Let's say I wanted this form to have a grid layout. I can go to the Design tab, go down to the Layout section, and switch to Grid. Now, this was already possible with the simplified mode. But now, with the advanced mode, let's switch this back, I can also do other things. Like, for instance, I can select these two fields and right click to wrap them in one horizontal stack. And I'll remove the padding here. So that's one example. I'm going to undo that. Another thing I can do is, for instance, if I wanted to insert arbitrary other elements just in the middle of this form, because it's it's just a container like any other kind of element on the page. And let's say I wanted to insert in an alert here right above the region. And let's say that I want to say, see the regions page for more info. And I'm going to add some spacing there. So you know you can really customize how your form looks. One other important customization you can do is using your own input components. So Right now, the way that um, this form is structured, I'll delete this, uh, is if we open the outline in the left, we can see that the form actually contains a number of different form fields, these four different form fields. And each of these form fields contains a slot for the label. So inside of this label, we can add other things, like let's say we want to add an icon in this label. But also, there's the children slot for the actual input that the user is inputting data into. So here we have a number input, but most of these other ones are text inputs, which is usually what you're starting with. And I can basically select this input, let's say the region. Instead of just being a freeform text input, I know that the region is always one of these existing values, south, north, west, et cetera. So instead of this freeform text input, I'm going to delete that and insert in its place something that lets me choose from just a few options available. A common way to do that is using a select, but that was already possible even in the simplified mode. So let's insert something a little bit uh, more interesting. Let's say we want to insert a button group. And this button group on the right, we can customize what are the options that are shown here and available. So let's say we want north and north. The value is what's actually written into the database, whereas the label is what's displayed to the user in the UI. We also have south, south, like that, and so on. So now the user can just directly choose one of these values that are available. And you know, besides these, these button groups or radio groups, you can also, let's say this first one, this is just a nonsensical example, but let's say we actually wanted to insert a rating component where it lets us choose a number of one to five, or let's say that for this last one, again, a nonsensical example, but let's say we wanted a, a file upload component. So all these would actually just work with the form. And by that, I mean the form's validation rules will all work. So let's say that I had a validation rule on this field for the state region that says it is required. So let's actually, I already selected a value here, but let's clear that. I'm going to refresh the page so nothing is selected. And if I just try submitting this form, it's going to give me an error saying that state region is required. So I have to first select a value to make it go away. And, and also, of course, the, the form submission itself is going to collect all the data from these different components that we have inside of the form fields. So that's a little bit of how to um, customize the components. Now, I'm going to undo all that. And restore the uh, original components, because uh, some of these new ones are just uh, nonsensical. Last thing I want to show is how to dynamically show and hide fields based on other fields. So let's say this name field, I only want it shown if you've selected north for the region. So to do that, I'm going to use the usual visibility controls in Plasmic for setting dynamic visibility. So we can set the visibility to a dynamic value. And we can, from this list, we can pick the form. 
and specifically the state region field in it. And we're going to use a little bit of code to express this, but we're going to say when the state region is north, that's when we want to show this, this name field. So now name is hidden because the current value is south, but when we switch to north, then state name is shown. So that's a little bit about how you can start really customizing forms.